Let's talk about shut accounts. And it's in the context of buying used gear or having gear that you're a bit concerned about. Now, having been a photographer for 15 years, I've blown through many cameras. And I'm the kind of photographer that buys kit and uses it until it dies. I don't upgrade anything unless I absolutely have to. So I don't buy, say, the latest Canon and then when the new model comes out, trade it in. That is one way to do stuff, that's absolutely fine. A lot of people do that because they have less devaluation in their eyes. Personally, I don't think cameras are that much better than one another, so I use a camera and I keep using it. But recently I had to do a bit of an audit in the studio to work out what kit was running out of life and, and the kind of numbers we use here, a shutter account, much like with a car, mileage. You look at a car, you see the mileage, and that kind of determines how much you think it's worth. Now with cameras, for some reason, and I assume it's because it's the only measurable metric, it's the shutter count that we look at. Now, a new shutter on a Canon camera is about £400 to be fitted. So if you're buying a £200 5G Mark II, a £400 shutter is an expensive replacement. If you're buying a £4,000 camera, not that much of a big deal. Now, I've got two cameras here. This one here is my 5D Mark II from yesteryear. I don't really use it for work anymore, but it's my time-lapse camera. This has 150,000 shutter actuations. This camera here is my backup camera. It has 140,000 shutter actuations. Very similar in the grand scheme of things. Um, very similar shutter actuations. I've not actually tested my main camera yet because it, it stays mounted to something that's a pain to do, but I, I consider it's over 150,000 considering the backup camera is. Um, and, I, and I got these with like 2,000 shutter actuations on them each. Now, as I've said, I've had a lot of cameras. I've had shutters replaced as well. Um, my Canon 5D Mark I, from looking at the Lightroom catalogs, you couldn't plug this in to test it, it had around four to 500,000 shutter actuations before the shutter blew. Um, I've also had Canon 5D Mark IIs blow the shutter at 40,000 shutter actuations. And what that means is this, the actual shutter actuation number is kind of irrelevant. It tells you how much it was used, but it doesn't really tell you when the shutter will fail. And sure, Canon say they're kind of guaranteed for this one, but they're not, they break all the time early. And if anything, my shutters have either blown incredibly early, like below 50,000, or well into the hundreds of thousands. But here's what's interesting. This camera here, as you can see, this was when I was a documentary photographer. This has been in the rain, it's been outside, it's missing most of the paint, the back of it's cracked. It's pretty filthy actually as well. This has had a hard life. This camera, apart from some scratches on the bottom from tripods, it's not got a mark on it. It looks pretty much brand new because this lives in the studio and this sits on a tripod and the most damaging thing I do to it is to take this off. Now, quick pro tip, if you're ever changing lenses or anything, power your camera off first because the static brings the dust in. But um, this camera here is by far in better nick than this camera here, despite them having similar mileage. So if mileage is not a great Thing to look at what should we be looking at and I, and I think a good thing is how the camera's been treated if you're going to buy a second-hand camera how has it been treated this here is a really bad purchase I mean the fact that it rattles isn't great but also you can see it has been dropped multiple times it's got chips it's got dents it's got paint missing some of it's held together with gaff tape whereas I'd be more than happy buying this at 150,000 shutter actuations there's no marks and it. it's been well looked after yes it's been used heavily but in a controlled and clean environment. So it's a much better thing. Now, if I was going to buy a digital camera today, I would for sure shop around for a low shutter actuation. Um, say I was going to upgrade these. As a professional, this as well, someone who shoots a lot, um, I would be looking at them and I'd be wanting something around 70,000 actuations or less. I don't think paying more for an even lower count really helps. I think 70,000 tells you that the camera's been well put together and it's gone through quality control okay. I think less than that, you might end up with something which there was an issue missed in quality control. And if it's no longer covered by Canon because it's an old body, then that's a kind of risky purchase. I'd want to know that it's been used. It's been used well, but not excessively. I'd look for signs of damage, scratches, chips, cracked screens. If it's got a cracked screen like this one has, I'd assume the person who had it didn't look after it very well. And I did not look after this very well. I mean, we'd literally be on a shoot somewhere and I'd slide it across the ground to the assistant because well, when you're shooting documentary stuff a lot anyway, it really doesn't matter a few extra scratches. Whereas this here goes from a humidifier cabinet 
to the back of a camera and then back again. The only time we use this is if we're doing the several setups on, on the same day. So we might have like three sets on one go. This will be on the second set and the third one will be on the third set. This will only come out to be used as the main camera if my current main camera died, which it never has done in the seven years I've had it. So shutter actuation, not as useful as you think, but does give you some good information. Like I said, making sure you know it's not a dud camera that's failed on quality control, making sure the camera is really well looked after. These are the key things. And you know, it's as simple as that. I don't think we should get too hung up on shutter actuations. I do think it's a good idea to check them now and again, just to see how much mileage you have put in. I'd imagine this will probably go to two to 300,000 shutter actuations. We're in a clean environment. We're not getting dust and oil on the shutter. You know, and if it fails, I'll get a new shutter because it's a 1,200 pound camera, so a 400 pound shutter replacement. It'll give me another seven to eight years usage in it. If the shutter dies my 5D Mark II that you can get for 200 pounds, I'll buy another 5D Mark II. I mean, it probably won't because I don't need one, but that would be my logic on it. Let me know what your thoughts are below on shutter actuations. Do you check yours? What are your cameras at? Have you had a camera go to an insane number? I've seen them up there on npb.com with like 700,000 shutter actuations. Do you have one of those cameras? And if so, do you worry it's going to suddenly tank? I mean, I'll be honest, at 140,000, I do start to think this is running out of life now. This is coming to the end of its useful life. But as a backup camera to get that extra 10,000 to hit what Canon say they sort of expect from it, it's probably going to be another year, I'd imagine. So safe for now, safe for now for sure. And of course, having the benefit of having three identical cameras, it kind of means I don't need to worry all that much. Anyway, I hope this video is of use to you. If you want to know more stuff about buying used kit, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to put some useful information together for you. I'm a big advocate of buying used. I don't want to buy a brand new camera and suffer the depreciation. And yes, I know someone's going to go, but you can offset it with tax. I'd rather have the money. I don't care about offsetting tax, I want money. I'm a professional photographer, not someone trying to not pay tax. There we go. See you soon. Rant over. Goodbye.